presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to our man, Al in Homo Sasa. What's going on, brother? It's, isn't it wonderful? I went ahead and invested in your uh, Tiger Dollars. <laughs> and I went ahead and got the gold report <laughs> for a year. And, and also your, morning, your, your call letter and stuff like that. Like that and I got over a 50% return in one day not counting uh, everything else but I just want to thank you Tom's not perfect but he tells you how to put your stops in and he keeps your losses small you can take your small losses but then all of a sudden you'll be like Dave Root and you'll hit a home run I mean a big home run yeah and put the money in your pocket okay I mean, brother I you're awesome man thank you now Tom O'Brien <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. He will be back Monday. Let's take a look at the market right now. Everything's moving a bit sideways. The Dow was up a little bit um, earlier today, uh, but everything else is moving a bit sideways. ES uh, down about 0.05%. NQ's down about 0.14%. The Russell up marginally. Uh, again, we're still kind of seeing a big sideways movement here. Uh, the futures... For the Treasury bonds are up as well, um, really moving sideways. Gold, we're still on a downward trajectory in gold. Uh, the gold futures at 1917 now, um, but over this past week, uh, you can give it some month, we've just seen a really, really cool burn down with that. Silver up marginally at 0.15%. Then we have copper as well, up 0.39%. The big boys in the market, Tesla's been getting slaughtered uh, the past few weeks as well. Uh, really this past month, some high volume here. Uh, Meta down, Google's been going down as well, and that's pretty substantial percentage. Uh, yesterday, I think we were around the same. Disney hanging out around that $85 mark. We'll see what happens with them. Might be sitting in this kind of range for quite a while here. We're looking at... Uh, Southern Copper, we're at 77.35. Steel Dynamics at 104. Um, it did test that range again if we look in the year to date. It's not what it is. Even these kind of like high volume lows here. And we just keep bouncing off that 100 level. It hit the 110 for a little bit and came right back down. So I think we're going to stay in there uh, for quite some time now. That looks like it's kind of building cause for lower price. Uh, with, with low volume in this range here, but we'll see what happens with it. Super interesting. Hawaiian Electric had uh, quite a big of a move. We're up 17% today. Uh, yesterday we were looking at it, and it was quite, uh, you know, I mean, this, this got knocked out. But it came back up a little bit. It looks like they're going to be able, well, they say... Uh, that they'll be able to absorb a lot of the losses with the cash that they have, which a lot of um, investors found that to be positive. Um, again, I still think really not out of the woods yet with this stock. Um, again, any kind of, you know, if we get a higher uptick sometime Monday, anyone who purchased it now is, might just dump it immediately. I mean, it's still kind of risky, right? And if it turns out that any of their components that they had set up uh, had anything to do with the fires, um, you know, they're in for a world of hurt. I want to take a look at the home builders um, because on the year they've done significantly well. So let's take a look here first and we'll go to year to date on this. So this is Beezers, this is a 93% return over the year. They're doing single family homes, multifamily homes, design and sales. Let's take a look here. MHO, same kind of idea, 100% return over the time, over this year. Dream Finders, same kind of concept right here. We're at 110%. And then this is what uh, Berkshire Hathaway added, which was DR Horton. And they're doing uh, quite well also. It's interesting because I want to take a look here. I was reading AP, and they had the average long-term U.S. mortgage rate climbs to 7.09% this week to the highest level in more than 20 years. 
Mortgage buyer Freddie Mac said Thursday that the average rate on the benchmark 30-year home loan rose to 7% from 6.96% to 6% last week. A year ago, the rate averaged about 5.13%. In theory, we might be having some prices coming down, but the demand's still there. And uh, it seems as more people are buying homes, they're going to be able to tolerate, uh, you know, this being kind of like the standard here. One moment. We'll read through this a little bit more. Uh, it's the fourth consecutive weekly increase for the average rate and the highest since early April 2002 when it averaged 7.13%. The last time the average rate was above 7% was last November, where it stood at 708 Obviously, um, this can be extremely pricey, and you know, depending on the cost of the home, which at least in the area that I'm at, I mean, we've seen maybe a slight decrease, but uh, there's still, you know, in St. Pete's a specific case, right? But uh, as it stands on the whole, you know, prices have adjusted a little bit to the downside, but nothing, you know, significant uh, that could warrant. Uh, just it amazes me how, I guess, just people have savings, right? People have money and are able to kind of afford these kind of rates on uh, expensive homes. Um, I was reading something a little bit earlier as well, but some of those savings are kind of running out, but we can get to that a little bit later in the show. Uh, the latest increase in rates follows a sharp uptick in the 10-year Treasury yield, which has been above 4% this month and climbing. Uh, the yield, which lenders use to price rates on mortgages and other loans, uh, touched its highest level since October on Thursday morning. And it's close to where it was in 2007. The yield has been rising as bond traders react to more reports showing the U.S. economy remains remarkably resilient, uh, which could keep the upward pressure on inflation, giving Federal Reserve reason to keep interest rates higher for longer. A lot of people getting into bonds, too. A lot of people getting into corporate bonds as well. Uh, another company I want to look at, Cisco, and we'll talk about this a little bit more when we come back from the break. We only got about a minute and a half left. Uh, but, you know, I always try to talk about, let me fix this mic for a second. Probably don't hear all that scratching. You know, I always harp about cybersecurity. Cisco, you know, obviously provides solutions regarding that as well. But uh, they also, they have a dominance in the networking uh, f area as well. About 43% market share uh, regarding hardware and kind of the software that goes uh, with networking. Uh, they've done quite well, uh, at least after the last earnings report that they had. Um, Cisco's unique, obviously because I said the 43%, but they're also really, um, they're providing this kind of base and the foundation for AI to be able to transmit data. So, you know, you have all these API calls that are going on, which is what AI is using, you know, in, in order to uh, gain data and uh, kind of learn more about what's going on. And the amount of traffic that is generated from that is pretty huge. And a lot of the infrastructure uh, at least for these private companies, is going to be built on Cisco. Uh, they're about to roll out some new uh, Ethernet cables, which is going to allow for way faster speed and some more like fault resistance, which is going to be massive. I'm interested to see uh, how this stock does going forward, um, especially as uh, some of these AIs are being integrated into uh, enterprise. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. We have Basil Chapman with us, so you don't want to miss that. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. I want you to take a look over here at this screen, all right? On August 23rd, Basil Chapman is going to be having a subscriber-only webinar, okay? So if you're subscribed to the opening call, which you really should be, right? I mean, it feels like it's like a cheat code, right? His, his information is phenomenal. If you're subscribed to the opening call, you're going to get in this webinar for free. It's from 4 o'clock to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, also, folks, if you're not subscribed... Every new subscriber, there's a, they get a 30-day money-back guarantee for whatever reason, and I can't imagine why you would or wouldn't. Uh, if you don't like his uh, newsletter, you can go ahead and get that. Basil, are you with us? Yes, I am. I must say, I'm listening to this, and I'm looking around to see who you're speaking about. Thank you very much. <laughs> Basil, I'm serious. I take a look at all the newsletters when I publish some of them in the morning, and I always enjoy yours so much. It's well, just concise you. and informative. It's awesome. So tell us a little bit about the uh, the webinar here. So let me just put, slide this across here. So in my work, um, I look at certain moving averages, certain uh, technical tools that I just put on the chart, which I might not have to use at all. And sometimes I, I do, sometimes I don't. And it's how you use these tools that are really important. You know, it's you're not going to use a hammer if you're looking for glue. You're not going to use, uh, you know, glue if you're looking for a saw. You need the right tool for the right time. So I spent quite a lot of time over the last few weeks discussing with Tom many times when I was interviewed about the power of this 914 exponential moving average and how it really uh, it can help you in assessing duration and turnarounds and all sorts of things that are really important and such a simple tool to put on your chart it's a it's a nine and with the nine I'll, I'll show you this I'll keep moving over here to show you so I've featured this particular chart right here almost every day for the last couple of weeks. And I said that in the Dow, I don't want to go through all the different uh, aspects that I talk about, but the one most important one is, let me just move this as I, I use this as a, as a daily chart. So here we go. This daily chart showed you the nine period exponential moving average crossing positive way back in June. And it stayed that way, this green line. And it takes a long time for this green line to turn down, to turn pink. And how you assess it is important. So I was anticipating that there would be a Dow turnaround. But at the same time, there are other technical tools that I use. For instance, 
there's a nine period exponential moving average that's important but i also use see this little blue line here look how this blue line picked the exact bottom right there at the bottom uh that was back in july and look how it got the exact top to the down august the first where we actually went short the dow so that just simple tools it's just sitting there. there's nothing you need to do you just observe it and then at a certain point you make an assessment so within that context we're also looking at uh, other techniques that I'll be discussing. Um, so it's the power of the uh, 914 EMAs and other indicators. So we'll be going through that. We'll be looking at how to use the on-balance volume for potential price turns, when and how to use the 200 exponential moving average. That's a longer-term moving average. You don't need it, but when the price gets, we've seen it over the last week, when the price gets closer and closer, the gold did it. So many of the dollar has moved up towards its resistance at the 200 period moving out. And then bar symmetry, and bar symmetry basically says, it's fascinating how you can use the now see the number of bars on the upside equal exactly the number of bars to the downside. If you use the, the what I call the plumb line or that fulcrum right in the middle, look, the Dow went right to that gap in in the same number of bars from that um, high that was made at 35,679. And then I have a technique I call the Chapman Wave Inside Wedge. It's either a support or a resistance line. And that shows you how often you can test that line and even bounce away from it. So these are very practical uh, uh, tools that you can use. I'll be discussing our positions, and we've had some really nice positions. One of them is in the SMH, the uh, Semiconductor Index. If I can just find my earphone, just popped right out. <laughs> no and that, uh, we were very fortunate. We went short uh, two days after the little doji candle high at 161. Went short at 159. We actually have the SOXS. That's the three times short, long, you, you buy it as a long position, but it actually is made up of, of a short position. And we've had fabulous gains intraday. In fact, from our initial entry, uh, we were, we're up about 30% this morning on, on, on one part of the position. So I want to show these things. I get small. I also like to, for my subscribers, I have very small price, low price stocks. For instance, yeah, we have Uranium Energy Core. Mm. We've had it. And look, it's walking this nine period moving average and 14 period moving. So I, I, it's, a, it's a really, it's an intensive workshop, but I'm gonna try to make it as simple as possible. And we're looking at our positions. What, what, what do we expect next? What's anticipated? How are these technical tools going to help us? Very practical, ongoing uh, thing. And of course they get my newsletter every day. Absolutely. And and as well, you know, I would say that, you know, I've I've, uh, host a lot of the webinars that you've done um, and you do a really phenomenal job at explaining it I would say when I first started working here and seeing the charts you know it's a lot to look at right but when you get into these webinars right it is broken down in such a, a good way that you can really wrap your head around it and and plus it's archived as well so if you want to keep going back and learning some more um, I mean you should because it's 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 really awesome and it's a very they, powerful. They tool. also get numerous webinars that I have on all these different ah. techniques, and they can go through the archives. Even this will be archived. They can go through it as me if they can't make it at four o'clock. It'll be archived the next day. They'll be able to look at it. And as I say, it's very practical. It's going to be money management, all sorts of things that I think are really important to the whole vernacular of 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 the stock market. Absolutely. Well, Basil, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, we're really looking forward to that webinar, August 23rd. Thank you very much, Jacob. And congratulations. You're doing a fabulous job. I mean, <laughs> this is this is all new to you, and you just right at home. It's fabulous. Well, I appreciate you saying that, Basil. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Take care now. Fine. Bye-bye. Yeah, so guys, I'll put, uh, put this in the den, and I'll post it onto the YouTube as well. Um, again, 30-day money-back guarantee if you're a new subscriber. Get in. Check it out. Again, I think you're really going to love it as well. I want to say, too, since we're going to be having it in the Discord, and I try to plug this as often as I can, you know, you can go to TFNN right here. All right, let's go to services. Tiger's Den Trading Room. This is $1 a year, guys. This is $1 a year. That's it. No, no catch, nothing else. You subscribe to that. We have the step-by-step -step here. Follow that to a T. We'll get you right in. If you're in the Discord and you have any issues as well, and I just want to bring this to everyone's attention, we also have a help center as well. Now, you can't really type in this or anything like that, but I have...
two videos right here that'll give you a crash course. So if you're having any difficulties with it, say you've already subscribed to it and uh, just a little bit difficult, you're not wrapping your head around it, um, which I get, you know, there's a lot going on with this. Come here, we still can help you. You can also uh, send me an email at jacob at tfnn.com. Wonderful deal. All right, let's take a look here. I'll just finish up on Cisco since we have, uh, we have about 30 seconds to the break. I think, uh, you know, the more we virtualize with everything and the more that these kind of like content generating AIs and language models come out, again, the name of the game really here is going to be these API calls, right? So this is different uh, programs communicating and pulling data from other programs or platforms. And that's how, uh, you know, that's like the equivalent of an AI reading a book or, you know, reading a, a newsletter for, you know, for example. That's a lot, a lot of traffic being generated from this. Take a look at Cisco, see how it can maybe fit in uh, to your portfolio. Folks, stay tuned. We will be right back. Attention traders and investors, are you ready to elevate your game in the stock market? On August 23rd, join Basil Chapman, the mastermind behind the renowned Chapman Wave methodology in a subscriber-exclusive 90-minute webinar. From 4 to 5.30 p.m. Eastern, dive deep into the secrets of the 914 moving average, decode market turns, and get a head start on the stock outlook for September and October. The golden opportunity is free for all opening call subscribers. And if you're not on board yet as a subscriber, here's the deal. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee. Zero risks, all rewards. So what are you waiting for? Visit the front page of TFNN.com now and secure your spot. TFNN, educating investors. There you go. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Let's take a look at this headline right here. Uh, the government is going to begin canceling student loan debt for about 804,000 borrowers. Now, this is done to fix, as it says in the subtitle here, um, administrative failures that were occurring, okay? So the big deal here is that under certain plans, the IDR here, Income Driven Repayment, um, once payments have been made for 20 or 25 years, they can be forgiven by the federal government. 
all right? Now, about due to some administrative failures uh, that apparently have been pretty well documented, um, about 804,000 borrowers had never received that credit and still continued to pay uh, for varying lengths of time. This is probably very welcome news for a lot of folks. You know, when you're getting out 20 to 25 years, these are, you know, your young college students that I think maybe get, um, you know, so what kind of what you typically think of, right? When you hear, okay, we need uh, loan forgiveness. I mean, these are people that are, you know, well into middle age, you know, 50s even, even a little bit longer than that, uh, who are still paying uh, debt for their student loans. So this is gonna free up a lot of cash for them, hopefully. Um, you know, that will act again, maybe in a weird way, as it could increase inflation in some capacity. 804,000 people is not that much, considering the population of America. Uh, but if more of these kind of alleviations take place, right, um, this one ha obviously has precedence. But there's obviously been some political battle going forward with uh, just relieving uh, large portions of student debt in general. We could see like an upward pressure in some um, consumer spending. Uh, but it, again, at 804,000, you know, how much does that really uh, make a splash in the total economy? Regardless, impacted borrowers with IDR plans should expect to receive emails from the loan services with the subject line, your student loans have been forgiven. That probably feels pretty good. Now, you know, there's a lot of arguments like, you know, why is college so expensive? Right, and there's a lot of administrative costs that go into it, um, and that forces younger people to take out larger and larger loans as time goes on. And uh, you know, I'd really say like 18-year-olds going into college probably don't really understand, uh, you know, really like the value of a dollar, right? So they kind of get in, take these loans out. They're not federal grants; um, they can be pretty high APRs, honestly. And I read this article here. Kind of makes you feel bad, especially if you're saddled with student debt. The colleges are spending money uh, that they don't have. Uh, let's take a look here. So the price of college is rising, and for once, we can't blame inflation. Uh, spending increased by 38% at the median flagship school, uh, the best known and usually the oldest public university in each state, uh, between 2002 and 2022. And they pass the tab to the students. Again, that's going to increase the amount of money that the students will have to borrow uh, and eventually pay back, right? Uh, contributing to the 1.6 trillion student debt crisis. That's according to Wall Street Journal's analysis of over 50 schools. So what's driving this increase here? Because this is pretty substantial, right? And, you know, as an American, you should be like, okay, maybe we need to figure something out with this. Uh, so our other citizens aren't saddled with so much debt and paying for so long. Uh, so over the 20 years analyzed, the median flagship salaries and benefits rose by about 40%. Spending on athletic coaches jumped by 50%. Obviously, it's a huge moneymaker for the universities. Uh, and millions of dollars were pumped into new construction and renovations. And this is, again, according to the Wall Street Journal. Administrative costs have also become a greater share of institutional spending per U.S. News and National Center for Education Statistics. But the shiny new student union and all those higher salaries don't pay for themselves, of course. To afford them, every school in the Wall Street Journal's analysis increased tuition and fee revenue per student by double digits from 2002 to 2022. At the University of Oklahoma, tuition fees per student rose by 166% uh, in the two decades analyzed. Uh, Penn State, the most expensive flagship state school, cost the average student nearly $27,000 a year. And you think about it, if a lot of these students are taking out the debt on their, uh, you know, on their own, you know, if their parents aren't helping them or whatever, uh, these a lot of these kids don't really have established credit in any capacity. Um, and some of these costs can get pretty insane. And, uh, you know, in some ways it's, it, you know, you kind of pause to blame them for something like that, right? Um, you know, when I was in high school, I was never really taught much about how, like, finances work. I was lucky that I had family members who were interested in it and kind of conferred that information to me. But I would imagine, you know, a lot of my friends from college or just young people in general, I mean, that's kind of beyond them, right? And I don't mean that in a way to, like, down talk them because it's not. They just had not had never been taught this. So the big picture is schools are spending so much because there's no one to stop them, of course. Economist James Cook founded the trustees approved 98% of cost-increasing proposals at large public universities. That's pretty intense, to say the least. And again, I think it's like, you know, you look at it going forward, 
you know, there's obviously a, a big division on this. Um, and so what I'm saying with it is like, you know, with your fellow Americans, you should think in a sense like, okay, is it good that so many people are saddled with debt? What can we do earlier on to at least educate our young citizens or people who are about to be uh, adults and be able to vote and make decisions again in the workforce? What can we do to better equip them when they have to face something like this, right? As opposed to the whole, well, you know, just pay the debt. Valid, right? I mean, they did take out these loans and, you know, they agreed to the terms of it. Um, but, you know, it still stands. Do, do these young people fully understand what they're doing? I mean, what other option do they have? I've been told forever that you have to go to college, right? At least if you were born in the 90s. You know, you have to go to college. You have to do this. Um, so you have to take out those student loans. And when you get, you know, two decades, at least in one of these universities, 166% increase. I mean, that's, that's pretty intense, right? So this is not the same as it was back in the day. So, you know, hopefully our education of, of youth can, can get a little bit better regarding that. And then also we can take a look at, you know, rampant spending in colleges. All right, what else do I want to look at here? A bunch of cool stuff, honestly. I'll save this for the next one. This is kind of interesting here. Um, Let's take a look. Yeah, you know what? Let's talk about this right now. SpaceX did pretty well for themselves. Uh, you know, it's abandoning their Bitcoin holdings. Cryptocurrency is, uh, especially Bitcoin, is in a pretty rough uh, spot, obviously. Uh, so the new SpaceX financial documents reported by Wall Street Journal will provide a rare look into Elon Musk's private rocket company. Of course, Elon Musk is a very big player in the crypto space. Of course, he's a famous pumper of Dogecoin and probably a famous dumper of it as well. Cryptocurrency prices swung wildly after the late Thursday report, which revealed SpaceX sold its Bitcoin holdings. SpaceX posted a Q1 2023 profit of 55 million on 1.5 billion in revenue after two years of major but narrowing losses. The Hawthorne, California-based company recorded 5.2 billion in total expenses for 2022, increasing the 3.3 billion in 2021. Okay, so why am I talking about this? It's not really because of SpaceX. They're obviously private. <clears throat> so it doesn't do us much good. But it's everything that's going on with cryptocurrency and how it's kind of seeping into kind of what's called Tradfin, right? Traditional finance. They're basically going to start allowing crypto futures to be traded. Uh, Coinbase gets a green light from regulatory bodies. And uh, spot ETFs are getting approved as well. But that's not coming to the U.S. just yet. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. 
Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Yesterday I was uh, talking a little bit about some of the cell phone providers, um, how they're seeing some cuts into their profits, like Verizon, AT&T. This is a lot uh, to do with not everyone's buying uh, the newest generation phone or um, you know, tablet. China, China especially, they're they're really ramping down. They're keeping it for about four to five years, and uh, a lot more Americans are doing that as well. Um, another issue they're going to face coming forward, and we'll see what happens with this, is the lead from abandoned phone cables are polluting dozens of neighborhoods. This is in Louisiana, and this is all tied to Verizon and AT and T. Uh, the Wall Street Journal estimates about 2,000 lead-covered phone cables are spread throughout the country. Again, it's particularly bad in Louisiana. As old cables degrade, lead can leach into the soil at high levels, the report found. Obviously, uh, this is pretty bad. Wow. 2021 pediatric study found that half the kids in the U.S. have high levels of lead in their blood. Obviously, not good for brain development. Some people say that's what... Uh, collapsed the Romans in some capacity. An investigation has revealed more than 2,000 lead-covered cables left behind by telecommunication companies could be the source of soil contamination as they degrade underwater and overhead. Despite efforts to rid the environment of dangerous lead paint and pipes, uh, the Wall Street Journal investigation found that cables abandoned by Verizon, AT&T, and others pose a threat to unsuspecting Americans. So, you know, think about it. Okay, you're getting, you know, some profit cut from people not you know, purchasing new phones or switching plans as often. Like, it's not as plan-heavy as it used to be, right? And if uh, this situation problem reaches, like, a critical mass uh, under an administration that's, like, maybe inclined to address, um, you know, certain environmental issues, uh, I could see them being forced to kind of pay for this, right? I mean, in theory, they're, you know, they kind of own these cables and they should be in charge of managing them. Uh, the journal tested samples from about 130 underwater cable sites and found lead present in the soil of the Passaic River in New Jersey, the Detroit River in Michigan, the Williamette River in Oregon, and the Mississippi River in Louisiana. The soil of more than 48 locations uh, were contaminated uh, beyond levels determined safe by the EPA. You think about it too, like we, America, hmm, you know, we had the kind of the privilege in a way, um, I mean, you know, our citizens did it, but we really pushed through this new age of, you know, electronics, telecommunications, all these kind of things, and, and pioneered a lot of stuff. What, what that's resulted in is kind of this patchwork network uh, of, you know, communications in America, right? Here's something, again, going all the way back to the 1950s, even earlier, um, all the way up to the newest stuff, and, and what happens is there wasn't, you know, a lot of controls back then, right? I mean, they were putting chemicals in foods and spraying DEET on children and stuff like that um, until we realized it's not really the best thing. And so, you know, when you look at other developing countries, let's say like China, for example, um, obviously they have issues of their own regarding, you know, what they allow kind of into their environment. Um, but other countries get to learn from what we've done, right? 
so they get newer tech and that's going to set them up to be a little bit cleaner going forward and when uh, that tech ages out it won't be as detrimental right i mean this could this could shape up to be a pretty massive issue we saw it happen in flint uh, lead consumption during development absolutely impacts um, good development in the children and it also just negatively affects people and adults anyway um, so this could potentially be a massive issue, especially when you start polluting, like, you know, water tables and everything like that. According to the EPA, the safety standard for lead levels in the soil where children play is 400 parts per million. Uh, sediment in a Louisiana fishing spot often frequented by local kids was found to have 14.5 times that amount in June 2022. And kind of going off a little bit as well, uh, you know, in Europe, when you go to get your... Um, kind of yearly checkup with your doctor, they will actually test you for heavy metal toxicities. Um, in America, we don't do that. Uh, it's also extremely expensive to do it. So say you go to your doctor and say, hey, I, I want to get a hair follicle test or whatever. Uh, it's extremely expensive and usually insurance isn't going to cover that, right? And, you know, based on this investigation that Wall Street Journal did, a, a lot of kids have this, uh, at least some kind of lead toxicity. There was just something that came out a while ago that Hershey's, and this didn't really hit big news or anything like that. And it seems like it wasn't spoken about after the initial headline. But, you know, Hershey's and some other um, large chocolate makers in America had a, a huge levels of lead and cadmium in their product, like way over the daily recommended dose. And, uh, you know, I think it would be interesting if there really was like a broad study on if there is heavy metal toxicity uh, affecting Americans. You know, there's a lot of issues going on with like mental health in the country and all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, that can be a result of something like that. Super interesting stuff. But, you know, beyond just looking out for the environment and kind of just being a more like effective society where we like clean up our messes and everything like that. Um, I mean, this is now getting to the point where it's affecting children. Look at this a little bit more. Obviously, brain damage uh, found more than 100 schools have lead cables running overhead. More than 1000 schools and child care centers are within half a mile of underwater lead cables. All right. Verizon did not immediately respond to the insider's request for comment, uh, which was made outside of normal working hour, uh, hours. An AT&T representative responded to the insider's request for comment by directing questions to Broadband Association U.S. Telecom. And, of course, a pretty nice diplomatic response. The health and safety and well-being of our people and our customers is important. Well, we'll see what happens with that. That might shake up to be a pretty bad situation for AT&T, Verizon, and other providers in the coming future. Take a look. I was talking with this about one of my friends. She's a uh, she. She does, you know, just basically health, right? She's a dietitian. She does um, physical therapy for people. Um, and we were talking about these weight loss drugs, and Eli Lilly has obviously really capitalized uh, with Monjaro. If you're not familiar with this, it's predominantly a diabetic drug. Um, but what they found is that when you use it, uh, you end up losing quite a bit of weight and. Uh, Hey, man, Americans love that. China also, uh, I think they now have the most obese population number-wise, maybe not percentage-wise, but number-wise for sure. And uh, they're getting into the market for some of these weight loss drugs. What's interesting about Manjaro, and it's really one of the, the perfect kind of drugs if you're a, uh, well, one, if you're an investor in a company like Eli Lilly, uh, but also if you um, are an executive there or in the finance department, is you have to keep taking the drug. You have to keep taking it. If you get off it, uh, what it does essentially is suppress your desire to eat. Um, and uh, if you get off it, you know, it's going to come back. Um, and people tend to gain all that weight uh, back. So this is kind of one of those like forever prescriptions you're going to want to be on. Um, I'm not advising that, by the way. I'm just saying that's the model they're looking at, uh, which is widely used, obviously, for weight loss, raked in nearly $1 billion in second quarter sales. That's absurd. Uh, more than $200 million above what Wall Street had expected. Uh, shares of the drug maker soared 17% to an all-time high Tuesday after Eli Lilly said Manjaro sales swelled more than 70% since the first quarter to $980 million. Wow. Almost all of that came from the U.S., and companies said significant demand was leading delays in filing orders uh, for some doses. I mean, really imagine, you know, obviously obesity um, is, is a health risk. And if you get something like Medicare to put Manjaro on, like if they could make the case that getting this would lower, you know, uh, cardiac issues or anything associated with um, obesity, uh, ooh, they're really, really in uh, for a payday. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back to wrap up the show.
Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Take a look at the SPY here. Just capped the 437 here, really pushed on it with some volume. It's coming right back down. We'll see what the uh, next bar does here. Um, we might get a, uh, a green day really sideways right now so it's still up in the air but it would be uh, interesting to see uh, how that shakes out uh, a lot of battle here between buyers and sellers uh, pretty interesting the dow doing about the same thing nq still down and the russell is up a little bit at 0.55 percent let's take a look uh, at the end of every show i like doing a quick science segment if i know i ramble on about the lead in the water but this one's kind of interesting it's a little bit happier i suppose um they're using wood dust essentially to trap microplastics. They found this stuff, microplastics, on the top of Everest, uh, at the bottom of the ocean. Uh, this isn't everything. It gets in your blood, it gets in your body. Um, and I don't know what the long-term effects are, but uh, it's like a fifth element now. It's pretty nuts. It'll be here long after we are gone. Um, so essentially, scientists at UBC's Bioproducts Institute found that if you add tannins, and that's the natural plant compounds that make your mouth pucker, it's in wine, if you bite into an unripe fruit, uh, to a layer of wood dust, you can actually create a filter that traps virtually all microplastic particles present in the water. Uh, while the experiment remains a lab setup at this stage, the team is convinced that the solution can be scaled up easily and inexpensively once they find the right industry partner. And you know, I, you know, I like being outdoors. I like fishing. It's nice to, you know, catch something and be able to eat it later in the day. And one of the things that's always on my mind. 
of doing something like that is even up I was uh, in, in the woods of Maine and deep out there uh, we, were, we were catching trout um, and the idea is that you know microplastics are everywhere to the point that these trout probably had it as well and if we could do something you know to limit the uh, amount of microplastics that inevitably get into the environment it would be awesome be better for outdoorsmen be better for just about everyone involved better for our kids folks thank you so much uh, it was awesome closing the week out with you tom will be back monday stay tuned for the port, uh, 4 p.m news we'll just take a look at uh, everything going on and uh we'll see let's see it looks like the spy may not get over that mark stay tuned folks we'll be right back